Greetings everyone. Welcome to the special lecture on International Day of Our Human Rights. Presently we are discussing the history of the movement for human rights. It took the catalyst of World War II to propel human rights onto the global stage and also to instill this matter into the global conscience. The unprecedented cruelties that were perpetrated during the conflict and uh, as a result the extermination by the fascist powers of over 6 million Jews, Sinti and Romani gypsies, homosexuals and persons with disabilities greatly horrified the world and hence an attempt was made as to question what all had happened and how it could be stopped in future. The trials held in Nuremberg and Tokyo after World War II introduced the rather new concept of crimes against peace and crimes against humanity. Neither utilitarianism nor scientific positivism, the philosophies that had determined the natural rights concept could address the problems that had erupted during the course of Second World War. So, the language of human rights seemed far more appropriate. After the war, the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunal introduced the subject of gross human rights violations to the international relations. And war crimes soon became a matter of discussion and deliberation. The individual German soldiers were charged of crimes against humanity. The revival of the concept of human rights can thus be seen as a reaction to the horrors of the war. During the next decades, human rights movement saw dif uh, different waves of activism which can be broadly divided into three phases. So, as uh, Human Rights Day is observed by the international community every year on 10th December, it commemorates the day in 1948 the United Nations General Assembly had adopted uh, the UDHR that is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The formal inception of Human Rights Day dates from 1950 after the assembly passed resolution 423 5th inviting all states and interested organizations to adopt 10th December of each year as Human Rights Day. When the General Assembly adopted the declaration, it was proclaimed as a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations towards which individuals and societies should strive by progressive measures, national and international, to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance. So, Universal Declaration of Human Rights sets out a broad range of fundamental rights and freedoms to which the entire humanity is entitled. It guarantees the rights of every individual everywhere without distinction based on nationality, place of residence, gender, national or ethnic origin, religion, language or any other criteria. Although the declaration is not a binding document, it inspired more than 60 human rights instruments which together constitute an international standard of human rights. Today the general consent of all United Nations member states on the basic human rights laid down in the declaration makes it even stronger and emphasizes the relevance of human rights in our daily lives. 
the High Commissioner for Human Rights as the main United Nations Rights Official and the Office of the High Commissioner play a major role in coordinating efforts for the yearly observation of Human Rights Day. Now, let us briefly look at the latest and the past observances of Human Rights Day. So, for example, the year 2020, uh, the, uh, the theme was Recover Better. Uh, for 2019, it was Youth Standing Up for Human Rights. 2018, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights turns 70. And the same was for 2017. Then for 2016, it was Stand Up for Someone's Rights Today. 2015, it was Our Rights, Our Freedoms Always. 2014, it was Hashtag Rights 365. 2013, it was 20 years working for your rights. 2012, My Voice Counts. 2011, Celebrate Human Rights. 2010, Speak Up, Stop Discrimination. 2009, Embrace diversity and discrimination. Now, uh, since today we all are going through post pandemic situation, and as a result, the world over there has been rise in inequalities. The COVID 19 pandemic has brought the world to a major crossroads, either we take the route of collective action and concretely address the pervasive inequalities that have risen across the globe or we continue on the route filled with deep-rooted injustices and pervasive inequalities. On Human Rights Day, 10th December, we are choosing to take the path that brings us towards a future with equality at its core. At the heart of human rights lie the principles of equality and non-discrimination. Equality has the power to help break cycles of poverty. It can give young people the world over the same opportunities so that everyone can equally benefit from the available resources. It can help in advancing the right to a healthy environment. It can also result in tackling successfully the root causes of conflict and crisis which today are found in each and every corner of the world. So, equality means everyone has access to COVID-19 vaccines, not just the wealthy nations and that everyone can live in dignity no matter who they are or where they are born. Equality means that we embrace our diversity and demand that all be treated without any kind of discrimination. On Human Rights Day, the humanity is calling for a new social contract. This means addressing pervasive inequalities and structural discrimination with measures grounded in human rights. It requires a renewed political commitment, the participation of all, especially the most affected, and also a more just and equitable distribution of not only resources and opportunities, but also power which means that more and more leadership positions should be enjoyed also by the poor and the marginalized. Equality and non-discrimination are the key to prevention of some of the gravest global crises of contemporary times. Human rights have the power to tackle the root cause of conflict and crisis by addressing grievances eliminating inequalities, exclusion and allowing people to participate in decision making that affects their lives. So, only if people are 
also the decision makers, they would not really be able to uh, be held accountable and nor the policies that will be made would be favorable to them. So, societies that protect and promote human rights for everyone are more resilient, sustainable, they stand better equipped to face unexpected crises, pandemics and the climate catastrophe. As we continue on the path towards the 2030 agenda for sustainable development and countries commitments to leave no one behind, we must strive for a world where a life of equality, indignity and rights is a lived reality for all. So, it is very important that this reality firstly should not be only on paper, it should be a lived reality, there has to be a practical uh, aspect to it and secondly it has to be for all, not only for those who are living in the developed world, uh, but also uh, those who inhabit the uh, uh, underdeveloped part of the world. On Human Rights Day 2021, let us all join efforts for equality so that we recover better, fairer and also greener from this crisis. Now, uh, let us discuss what were the events that were preceding UDHR so that we are aware of the factors that ultimately help in eroding human rights and so that we may not repeat that history. So, uh, as we all know that World War I was, uh, it was marked by trench warfare, use of poison gas, new weapons came to be used uh, in order to intensify war and increasingly all this affected the civilian population. The League of Nations was created in response to an emerging international sense of morality. Following the Great Depression, F. D. Roosevelt's New Deal that came out in 1933 guaranteed social and economic benefits for workers. His four freedoms, the concept that came out, uh, identified freedom of speech and religion and freedom from want and fear as essential for all people. And then, of course, uh, the stage was set for World War II, when the fascist parties uh, exterminated millions of people and the Japanese military brutalized residents of occupied countries. The United States finally dropped the first atomic bomb on Japan. So, the Nazi and Japanese war criminals were prosecuted in the first ever war trials that is the Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals. And finally, with the establishment of United Nations in 1945, the stage for, was set for a, a, a gradual redressal of issues related to human rights. Governments committed themselves to establishing the United Nations with the primary goal of bolstering international peace and preventing conflict. People wanted to ensure that never again would anyone be unjustly denied life, freedom, food, shelter and nationality. Post World War II UN Charter is also a very important document. It was the 1945 and the 50 founding members of the United Nations stated in the preamble of the UN Charter that they were determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person. 
in the equal rights of men and women and of nations large and small and to establish conditions under which justice and respect for the obligations arising from treaties and other sources of international law can be maintained in order to promote social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom. In the first article of the charter, member states pledged to achieve international cooperation in solving international problems of an economic, social, cultural or humanitarian character and in promoting and encouraging respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms of all without distinction as to uh, race, sex, language, religion or any other criteria. So, a strong political commitment was set and to advance on these goals, a commission on human rights was immediately established and charged with the task of drafting a document spelling out the meaning of the fundamental rights and freedoms proclaimed in the charter. Within three years, the commission guided by Eleanor Roosevelt's leadership captured the world's attention, drafting the 30 articles that now largely make up for UDHR, that is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The de declaration was presented to the world, acting for the first time as a recognized and internationally accepted charter, whose first article stated that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. UDHR constitutes the International Bill of Rights that lays down the obligations of governments to act in certain ways or to refrain from specific acts in order to promote and protect human rights and fundamental freedoms also of individuals as well as communities. Its principles by now have been incorporated into the constitutions of almost all the UN members and has achieved the status of customary international law for all people and all nations. So, human rights have continued to evolve and since its foundation, the United Nations has adopted more than 20 principal treaties including conventions to prevent and prohibit specific abuses like torture, genocide and to protect particularly vulnerable populations like refugees. So, there was a convention relating to the status of refugees in 1951, then also to protect women. So, there was a convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women that came out in 1979 and children uh, with the Convention on the Rights of Child 1989. A number of other treaties and documents have clarified and further developed some of the basic concepts that were laid down in the original UDHR, thus envisaging new generations of rights. These additions have been a result of a number of factors partly as a response to progressively modified ideas about human dignity and partly as a result of new emerging threats and opportunities like neoliberalism, globalization, etc. So, as a result, third generation rights have been the result of a deeper understanding of different types of obstacles that may stand in the way of realizing the first and the second generation 
rights. So, the idea behind the third generation rights was that of solidarity and collective rights of society or people such as the right to sustainable development, to peace or to a healthy environment and definitely the threat to environment and the uh, and the uh, uh, the danger of uh, disappearance of certain natural resources uh, is something which is more of contemporary relevance. Hence, a new category of rights was bound to appear. In much of the world, conditions such as extreme poverty, war, ecological and natural disasters have meant that there has been only very limited progress in respect of human rights. Following emerging threats and opportunities, the so called fourth generation rights linked to the recent fast paced technological development uh, represent the last discussed frontier of human rights. So, therefore, we have moved beyond the first generation right to the second generation, third generation and then fourth generation rights which are uh, a direct uh, uh, which is the direct result of the way technology is evolving and the way newer threats are appearing for humanity. So, a fusion of material, biological and digital technologies. Uh, raises existential questions about what it means to be human and how to protect human existence, dignity and identity. So, digitalization and datification of almost all human activities has created new opportunities of development, but has also created new possibilities or for violations of human rights and this partly explains why it is relevant to talk about the fourth generation human rights. So, now we cannot be content only with political and civil rights or with socio cultural and economic rights and what is the need of the hour is a new social contract in order to end discrimination of any kind. So, structural discrimination and racism have both fueled further the inequalities uh, in the post pandemic world. Equality and non discrimination are the core requirements for a post COVID world. And in order to address inequalities, to recover from the crisis, we must also address the inequality pandemic. For that, we need to promote and protect all categories of rights and we definitely need a new social contract for a new era. Thanks a lot.